Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another Reppy of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with your beauties. And in classic post worlds, not even 48 hours, the LCS goes, man, it's been too long since we've been at the forefront of the headline. So why don't we just do some sweeping changes that have probably in the been in the works for a long time, but nobody's heard about it. Let's just cut two teams from the league. Oh my god, just when you thought the LCS can't top it, once again, we get another drama story coming through from the North American League. Yes, we are moving from 10 to 8 teams in 2024 for the LCS. There are positives about this type of news. I want to get that in the forefront, and we can talk about that, and there's multiple angles. There's also a lot of bad here with this type of news, and especially the way that it was handled and announced, I think, from Riot and these organizations leaving that leave us rather angry and upset about the situations that a lot of people, a lot of players, unfortunately find themselves in. It's the similarities to what happened with the Challenger scene are glowingly obvious. It is maybe the better move in the long term, but yeah, the the time frame and the way that Riot goes about announcing these things is uh, terrible, obviously. They have... They had the audacity, and I'm going to read the quote to get it right. In this tweet from John Needham, president of Esports Riot Games, we made this change prior to free agency that begins today to allow impacted players the ability to pursue opportunities with other teams or leagues. And then immediately afterwards, you have a guy like Licorice who says, well, I was looking forward to the year, was ready to play with Golden Guardians, and now they don't exist, so I don't have a team. Bro finds out yesterday morning that this is going on. Uh, had full-on expectations, verbal commitments from the Golden Guardians that, yes, we're going forward with you next year. We like what you did, all this type of stuff. I think there are ups and downs of someone like Licorice, but pretty much undisputedly, I think at this point, a starting caliber worthy player of the LCS and top lane domestic. This is great. Uh-uh. Rug pulled right out. We're out of the Just league. Just kidding. We're not in the got, league anymore. Good luck, bud. You got nowhere to play. It is insane that this happens through. And again, this is a, a very similar situation to what we saw, what was going to happen with the academy scene in the, you know, in North America. Just ax it off right away. And, you know, a lot of people left without jobs, left without a spot to try and find that next landing spot. That's what's happened with a lot of these type of players. And Licorice is only one of the names, and one of the notable names that we know in this type of situation. Not happy with this. And no offense to Licorice, but they're lucky that the JoJo Pion stuff was figured out earlier in this offseason. If that dude all of a sudden doesn't have a team, we were talking about how's he going to get off of EG and find a better opportunity. Well, EG just won't be in the league anymore. That seems like a pretty good solution. We don't know the details of if Riot bought Golden Guardians and Evil Geniuses spot back from them, if they were getting any financial returns. But we were hearing all these rumors that Golden Guardians were trying to get JoJo, maybe going to get Sven on the roster. And then, you know, all these sources said, and then things changed for Golden Guardians. Oh, yeah, they realized they're not going to be in the LCS. I think rumored to be interested in Spica, Sven, Dad in on top of Licorice returning. And it's like, yeah, interested in what? Leaving the league, apparently, is the thing with the Golden Guardians. I, th this is a, a disappointment in a lot of avenues, right? Individually on the organizations and some of the management on the LCS, the way things have gone. There, there's a lot of area to point fingers, sure. But I don't think that's going to get us very far. We've got to be proactive. You've got to be looking for some positive angles. And how do you take this into the future? And I think there are ways to look at eight teams in the LCS for 2024. We need a little bit more information on what is the plan to either stay at eight teams and add in, you know, a relegation of some form. I don't think that's going to be the answer we're going to get from Riot. More experimental options would be something I'd like to see. Maybe introducing a spot for the CB low, the Latin American League, add in those type of spots to bring in some additional life, additional challenge into the LCS. And honestly, this does seem like a potential transition point to be getting to that point because, you know, we heard people saying before, maybe you should add two more teams to the LCS to get to 12. To you can't spread that talent pool out even more. 
long run, this will maybe make it more competitive here, but EG and the Guardians, I know EG, shady behind the scenes activity since they came to the LCS and that expands even to how they treat champions in the Valorant League. It's not just League of Legends that some bad stuff's going on behind the scenes. So I, I don't want to say happy to see you go, EG, because they did bring us JoJo, Danny. I know they kind of broke Danny. Uh, but some good moments and Golden Guardians too, despite all their budget issues. This is a team, they've been around for almost... Five years since the start of franchising, and then it just seems crazy. You're going to maybe get a tweet that says goodbye after five years? E EG, I have oh, very little questions about type of situation exiting, and I think, you know, not really looking for a lot of questions to be answered about it because of, obviously, all these other situations and the cloudiness around how they have operated in the LCS and treated their players, treated other players in amongst even in a general sense the esports organization that is the evil geniuses it's not too uh, upset in that avenue and what could be replaced what could be lost type of thing but you do look at the golden guardians relatively active partner someone that has been around and has been at times kind of looked at by the community and ourselves to say okay you got to do a little bit more you got to invest yourself a little bit more to try and grow contribute to this league to this region this past year arguably is the biggest step that we have seen from the Golden Guardians organization. And now we get met with no more Golden Guardians organization. I mean, that means how are teams like 100 Thieves going to farm off the Golden Guardians rosters and just take it over? That's that's the real change <laughs> that we're going to be seeing. The farm forward. system's gone. The farm system's gone. Who needs the Academy <laughs> League when you got the Golden Guardians doing all the work for you? Now... You look at the last six months, TSM, no longer part of the league. CLG becomes NRG, no longer part of the league. Now Evil Geniuses, Golden Guardians gone. Viewership is tanking. Even the world's viewership is rising. The LCS, what is the future? Is it, is it looking bleak? Are we doomed? Because we don't have a lot of the details of what the new format is going to be now with eight teams. There were rumors they were going to be moving to that three split system like the LEC EMEA are doing but as we've alluded to if you're slowly transitioning to have a America's league with South America and Mexico as well involved I think that is the future and competitive eight teams in instead of 10 it's it's probably going to be a better viewing experience it really will be I think when you think back to watching LCS right the broadcast everything else that goes through is probably a, a match every single week that drags on or drags down kind of the quality of the games, the broadcast, the interest, all these sorts of things. And maybe it's placed in the schedule where it's like, ah, oh, yeah, but it's right before the Cloud9 games. So we got to get through that one before that. And then now Cloud9 is later in the, all these type of things. So yes, I think scheduling could be better for the viewing experience. When you look at it, you know, there is that talk again about we've had, you know, playoffs in the LCS where you've had eight out of 10 teams qualifying. Six out of eight teams for the playoffs at this point. No, eight out of not, eight, everybody gets in. <laughs> not too much worse type of situation. And again, it opens the door as we look at it and try to advocate for bringing in this style, this America's type of, uh, of situation that you think you can form into a, a league, a continent, whatever you want for this situation to resemble like Valorant. And that's, I think, the angle that Riot will probably go. And listen, you can meme on still the LCS would beat up on wildcard regions, but you want to increase, increase the power level of Brazil and the Latin American scene. If they're playing in a regular circuit against the LCS, wildcard teams are only going to get better too. It might bring the LCS down to their level as well, but ah, can't get much lower. I think the the chances of that are, are slim that the LCS is going to necessarily fall down any lower type of thing. I think it's going to be raised up. I think the challenge type of level would be a, an increase. We've seen squads like Loud. You've seen, even if you just go even further into the CB lull and see that competition, it'll be there to the type of level that is going to be a challenge, is going to be a threat, is going to be something that is aggressive and pushes these LCS teams and players to continue to improve and innovate is one of the angles that I think is on that competitive side. I will say with all these, you know, relatively big-ish brands or fan followings, now eight teams, there's a lot of pressure on Cloud9 
to be carrying the entire brand of the LCS, especially with JoJo, who's kind of the future face of the league now on that squad. Yeah, and I, they had to make sure they're securing JoJo by upping the cash. Old Live Sandbox coming through to try Ooh. and snag away a hot LCS talent in JoJo Pian. One of the rumors going to be going to be hot seeing this C9 team this year. And yes, very happy to see JoJo Pian uh, verbally confirmed to be restaying with this Cloud9 roster, staying in the LCS. Again, the problem with all this isn't the change i think eight teams is something that people have chatted about for many years the issue is more so i know it's before free agency but i feel like a lot of guys are going to be in licorice's shoes where there's only eight other teams and they've all figured out their rosters already or at least the avenue that they're going and a guy like him wasn't actively looking or didn't think he'd have to be looking for a different team because he was locked up it's it's like expecting someone to make type of uh, you know a journey to meet you somewhere and saying oh i'll pick you up well, you, you offered to pick me up like five minutes before we said we would meet bro and it's like an hour drive type of situation insane this is insane to look at it and say that this is any type of proper preparation or notification for these guys in this situation nobody would be saying that that would be the type of level that they would expect or would or would like in a situation like this that these people find themselves in it's, it's hard to know what the right path forward for the LCS. Is it investing in this young domestic talent down to eight teams? Is it bringing over washed up LCK players like they've been doing time and time before? But it's, it's going to be a tumultuous time. There's still opportunity for them to kind of try something creative to bring this league back to what it was. But I think first and foremost... We need more personalities like Jojo Pion, who's there willing to talk a little trash and build up the storylines and the drama for some of these matches that don't necessarily have the historical significance anymore. Right, and I, I think we need to get back to also more so an era when you think to the earliest days of the LCS and the way that you could attach yourself to these players and the type of, you know, uh, look window that you would get from the content, either produced from the teams, the individual players, from the league even at that time, and what you would get and how you could attach yourself, how you could find a little bit of yourself in these type of players. You don't find that as often, I think, in the LCS anymore. And I don't think that that's because we don't have interesting players or players that you want to be a fan of. You just got to find it a little bit harder here. I think we can bridge that gap as the organizations, as the league and the LCS to get it through. Yeah, and it's a fine line as an organization to be providing next to no content with the players or teams, which we've seen a lot of the middle to bottom tier team. LCS invest absolutely nothing. And then you can go too far over. And, you know, sometimes, I hate to say it, a squad like G2 usually has great content. But sometimes it's forced sponsored content for just advertisements and different sponsors that the team have. So it's a fine line in between to grow your brand but not be force feeding it down the audience's throat but either way gonna be big changes coming good or bad to the lcs for 2024 north america wasn't the only spot just counting down the minutes for t1 to lock up that fourth title because as soon as that happened the bomb got dropped in the lck free agency because they said okay t1 took down the lpl Time to blow up the whole region to see how we can take them down. 11 starting players from three of the world's teams from the LCK. All free agents starting Gen G. Everybody but pays. Gone. Gone. It, it's like starting up a sports game and running the fantasy draft option before you set up the franchise oh. mode. Is the way this feels because so many big teams, so many big name players find themselves released, find themselves out there in the open sea of that free agent market, understanding that the situation, you know, the environment is going to change, the ocean size, pool, all these things. We don't know exactly how it's going to fit in, but we know with that salary cap, that is coming. And these are the type of moves, the type of reactions that you see come through from a lot of these teams. It's a lot of cleaning house, wiping the slate clean, and trying to see what they can come up with for next year for a possible p1 full run back that is that is on the table gonna be very hard to see come through from mr joe marsh and t1 to negotiate it through but if that's on the table 
you know the rest of these teams are looking at how do we find a way to assemble the squad that takes down this T1 Avengers. And, I mean, if all these changes are happening and T1 keeps the exact same core, I mean, that's only going to make them look even better for spring. But I think Gen G, you know, a guy like Chovy going is a little bit surprising, obviously. And this is a team that just won three titles in a row, but didn't get things done internationally. So they say, we got the rookie pays. We're building around him. I've seen Kanavi be linked to a return to the LCK, maybe coming to Gen G. That's a pretty good starting point if you can get Kanavi and pace. It is. I've, I've, I'm way less excited about that without Chovy attached to it for Gen G. The counterpunch there is yes, but there is still also a lot of other good options that are going to be in this free agency pool that you could look at to attach in there to make something interesting. That's going to be the angle for Gen G. There's a lot going on here. You'd be naive to say that all of these fresh talents, all these releases are going to stay within this LCK ocean. There's going to be quite a lot of these fish making that leap over to the LPL. You think that JDG was something last year. I think we're going to see another one of these super teams assembled through free agency. Yeah, you know some of the LPL squads are going to be willing to throw a whole ton of cash. Maybe the most compelling of, I mean, a list of compelling free agents. But you look at D+, it seems like they're all in on Showmaker to be the rebrand around because Deft, Kana free agents, and the big one for me, Canyon, who has been number one jungler for almost two straight years top three at worst and i'm i'm really curious if you, he gets dropped into the right situation on a new team refresh rejuvenated no no reason to not think that this guy can get back to the top of the table on a new squad and the questions are going to be how much of the last year or two's up and downs i think for canyon individually are, are aspect of the team environment and team players that were on there uh, for damn one or how much of that is on the individual player and seeing maybe a slight regression a slight lessening of the type of monster that we know canyon can be when he's out there on that starting stage this is one of those players taking that spot away they're looking, looking at deft as well another player here released from this deep the last roster. last last dance the last 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 dance coming back again and uh, as much as we talked about and would love to see that t1 roster stick together Deft and Kyria maybe reuniting for that last, last dance. This could be it. I mean, if if Guma wants to get out somewhere, I think everyone's still taking Guma over Deft if the option is there. Uh, KT, everyone but BDD is also out. It's, it's just crazy. It's impossible to even speculate when there's so many of these free agents. Guys not on the world's contending teams also becoming free agents. Barrel, Umpty, Closer, Teddy, Hanwha Life only bringing back Zeka and Viper and building around them. So, I mean, if these are all these changes coming outside of T1, it's impossible to predict what the LCK is even going to look like. Our Lord and Savior, the number one Renekton of the LCK. Okay, Breon Morgan, free agent right T1 there. T1 Morgan, um when Zeus went, goes and gets the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Umpty, as we know, is, is a player that has been tied even before this year to Team Liquid as a possibility. So seeing this release kind of plays into those rumors that we're seeing about another uh, TLCK revamp for Team Liquid Piosic this next back year. back to the LCK. Uh... And we got Core JJ playing in a CB LOL promotion event going on as well. They got everything. This offseason is kicking off right away. There are no regions anymore. It's just the global LOL esports bubble to be looking at. But somehow, if T1 is able to keep retain the starting five that they just won with, they get an even bigger win in the offseason because the big reveal, Coma, sitting at home watching this world and says, ah, the boys did it without me. That means they're ready for my return. As he comes back, to be the coach. We don't know fully what capacity, head coach, manager, whatever it is, but hopefully they're keeping Tom on this coaching staff as well. But I think most fans very excited to see Coma come back. Super thrilled. It's the rightful home, I think, for him. And, you know, just that matchup of both Fakers there, Coma's coming back, player coach. This is perfect type of thing. One thing I want to keep in mind with this one is that it has been quite a while since we did have that dynasty under Coma with T1. 
Koma himself has undergone quite a bit. He's captured himself another world championship, all these experiences, everything we, of course, have talked about with T1 and Faker since that long time. They both have grown individually and apart. So, yes, there's going to be a lot that is familiar and a lot that is going to be like old times. But this is also a new platform, a new place to start from. And you've had these experiences apart. Now, let's see how well we can grow in this situation is one of those things I'm very excited about seeing Coma return to T1. Yeah, that's the beauty of it is they both, him and Faker, won separate from each other and now being reunited, uh, getting all that skill set and knowledge that they learned separately being brought back together. <laughs> but whew, I know that the LCK salary cap is going to be a thing. And I think we all just assume that the LPL has blank checks to be handed out to these players, which... Maybe by comparison, they have a little bit more of that. But, I mean, this year you saw T1 versus the LPL as the other LCK, LCK teams fell a little bit flat. So, I'm definitely expecting some of these big-name uh, Korean free agents to be heading over to China. Fully expect that that's going to be a situation. You have to think about the pride of the LPL seeing all four, that Elite Four taken down. By T1, by Chovy's Faker. number one on that list, I'm saying, for LPL teams. That's got to be it. The number one, the reverse agent, Chovy, going across for it. It would be one hell of a story. But yes, fully expect that this is going to be another type of situation where I think there's going to be some swip swapping around and there's going to be some good teams, some strong squads assembled out of this free agency in the LCK still. But you better bet your bottom dollar that we're going to see some talent go over to the LPL try to assemble a squad that can do the unthinkable and kill the unkillable demon king and t1 and we're not even taking into account assuming that this jdg roster is going to be blowing up too so throw in kanavi we already mentioned but knight and potentially ruler also going to be free agents this is going to be the nuttiest offseason we've had in the lpl lck probably ever but that is it today for League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for watching. We will catch you on that flippity flip.